Welcome to this Junior's Gasoline Alley where today we're doing a quick upgrade on my wife's 2019 Alfa Romeo Giulia. So she's had the car, loves it, but has one complaint and that's that it doesn't have much of a turbo noise when she's driving it. So to fix that, got in front of us the BMS Burger Motorsports intake. So I'm gonna show you how it goes from sounding like this to sounding like this. With just a few minutes and a pretty quick upgrade. So go ahead, stick with me, and let's get this thing sounding better. And if you need any of the parts, they're linked down in the description below. Burger Motorsports intake for the Alfa Romeo Giulia is gonna be pretty simple. It's got this metal heat shield that's gonna go near uh, where the factory intake is. It's got a new uh, intake cone. This is of course gonna be washable and reusable. Looks pretty nice and as you can see, it's only got a few tools or a few bolts I should say. So we only need a few tools to get it installed. The tools required for this job are pretty minimal. A flat blade screwdriver, a little bit of thread lock I'd suggest, then a small ratchet with an extension, seven millimeter socket. You'll need a 10 millimeter box wrench, a magnetic pickup tool just in case you drop a tool in the engine bay, two different size four millimeters. I found the long with a ball end and a short one to be helpful, and then a five millimeter Allen wrench as well. So to get going on the install, the first and easiest thing you're gonna need to do so just pop the hood, then go underneath, grab the little yellow marker, and then that's gonna open up the intake for the car. And this is your factory air intake box, which is the piece that we're gonna be replacing with this BMS heat shield. It's just gonna go right there, pretty easy. So to go ahead and take this off, we're gonna start by removing four of these seven millimeter Allen bolts. Those are going to basically allow this cover to come up and be pulled off. So just go ahead, right on there, lefty loosey. And once you have those four undone, next step is you've got these two four millimeter Allens. So just go ahead, get those to come loose. This is going to separate the air mass meter from the air intake box. So this is just gonna pull off. Make sure you don't lose any of your screws. It'll make life a lot easier if those stay. And once those two bolts are undone, you can go ahead, kind of pull the air mass meter out of the way. And what you'll notice here is the whole intake can pull right out so that intake box is out and out of the way now and you're going to see the factory air filter which came with it which is nice integrated two-piece air filter and your air box there so put those aside save them just in case you want to go back to stock now the new air box is going to be pretty simple it's essentially it's just going to be going right in place of the factory one so you're going to be able to put it right back into place uh, and then get your two bolts lined up. So this is where the supplied hardware that came with it. Now what you'll do is you'll take your intake shield, get it lined up with the holes on your air mass meter, and then take one washer, your nut that came with the kit, and then a little bit of thread lock, slide it into place. And then we can do the same on the other side. That's going to slide in. And then it's going to be a 10 millimeter nut that screws just onto the end like that. And you're going to have your second setup of that down below. So again, take your screw, one spacer, a little bit of Loctite, not a whole lot. Thread that around. Slide it down into place. Place your 10 millimeter wrench on and then a five millimeter 
to tighten up. We're going to want to get these pretty snug. It doesn't have to be the tightest thing in the world. And then go ahead, do it right up top. Same idea here. 10 millimeter snugs just into place. Now we need to get this to slide right down into place uh, onto the mounting holes down there. So you've got a clamp up top, seven millimeter, and this we're just gonna loosen up a little bit because basically what we need to do is be able to rotate our air mass meter so that it can be placed kind of down low. And with that rotated to where it's going to kind of mount down, you're gonna see there's these two holes right there, the one for the heat shield, one for the factory air box. And this is where you're gonna reuse, where you're gonna reuse the screw that came from the air mass meter. Kind of screw it right in, four millimeter Allen, and just tighten down. This is gonna snug right up into place. Take the other screw, place it into spot as well. And this one's a little bit harder to get to Just get in there with your four millimeter. The last thing we gotta do before moving on to the air filter is we're gonna go ahead and tighten back up that seven millimeter clamp that we had loosened up to be able to rotate the air mass meter housing. So make sure to give that nice snug fit it doesn't need to be too tight, but it runs the same seven millimeter we were running before. We can take our air filter, go ahead and pull it right out of the packaging, just like so. You can see, this is a pretty nice looking filter. See this little bit of oil on the sides? Uh, that's normal. This type of filter does require some oil for it to work uh, most effectively. And now the filter is going to mount right up to the air mass meter housing. Uh, as you can see here, there's small ribs inside of the filter housing. So go ahead and slide it on most of the way. And we may just need to use a tool here to help get the rest of it to come on. So I'm going to put the tool, which is going to help me rotate along. There we go. Once that's pressed in, personally for looks, I'm gonna rotate this to where that metal ring is not showing. So I'll just flip it around here. Just like that. And now we can take the same flat blade screwdriver we were just using, open it up, and uh, I think I'm going to rotate that to where it's not seen as well. We're all snugged up. So that's together. It's mounted up onto the air box. And now this should be able to be able to make some great noise. So let's go ahead and start it up and see how it sounds. And in just about 20 minutes, an intake can be installed on your Alfa Romeo as well. Personally, I think it sounds pretty good. Uh, I've taken it for a drive. You just heard what it sounded like. It's definitely a bit of an upgrade over stock. Very easy to install and a reasonably priced upgrade. And took only about 20 minutes. 
Well, anyways, if you have any questions about the install, leave those down in the comment section below. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts there also. And be sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as subscribe while browsing the channel for other videos like this too.